Okay, teaching the nature of science. Let's look at a an approach that we could use, and that's history of science. One thing I cautioned in an interview I did previously in this module is that it needs to be explicit and reflective. And that's really the key in any of these instructional approaches is that you're uh, explicit while you're teaching about these particular aspects and you're teaching them as actual outcomes as, ins as instructional objectives rather than some nebulous theme that runs through science. Um, let's look at one uh, resource that you might use, uh, one piece of literature you could use to teach nature of science um, or for your own professional development to understand more content and um, or subject matter as well as nature of science and inquiry and that's E equals MC squared a biography of the world's most famous equation by David Bodanis published in 2000 and in this book David Bodanis um, takes each of those terms in that equation and talks about has, he has a couple of chapters on E for energy, a uh, chapter on the equal sign, kind of the history of the equal sign, and starts with Einstein's idea and then closes with Einstein's idea focusing on women in science and um, people of other races and ethnicities. And it's really a good book for touching upon aspects of inquiry. This website here you can go to and there'll be a video with the author summarizing his book and telling a story or two that might be entertaining to uh, your students. Um, I wouldn't recommend going below middle school in reading um, the book itself, but if you were used excerpts you could even use it with upper elementary. Um, Michael Faraday is one of the scientists uh, featured in this book looking at uh, the term energy and um, in this book one approach that you could use and just in general is to provide excerpts that highlight a specific aspect of nature of science like in this case the empirical basis so an explanation of what we're looking at here that Faraday used his senses as the source from which to communicate his findings. Although he believed in the authority of the Bible, he did not use it as his justification for his findings. So a very uh, religious person and um, that actually influenced his work in finding the relationship between electricity and magnetism but wasn't the, he didn't use it as the um, justification for his findings. And that's key, that's the empirical basis. That's just a different, um, emphasize one of the features that make science a different way of knowing than, for example, religious ways of knowing. And then we have the excerpt there supporting that statement about the empirical basis. And then this can be re, uh, repeated with observation versus inference with a quote here also from the book. And what's nice here is it's talking about the uh, experiment that was done in Copenhagen. And um, what you can actually do is using some simulations is to have students actually conduct um, inquiry through these virtual simulations like uh, the FET simulation here. Um, you can actually take this simulation and I'll show it to you in a moment here. You can either have the field, um, the electromagnetic or the magnetic field um, up or you can go ahead and take it down and students could go ahead and map the electromagnetic field, make an inference here as to where the lines of the field are. And of course there's other things you could do looking at really Faraday is finding the, um, discovering the electromagnet or I should say inventing it and, um, and that can be something that 
students uh, investigate whether at the middle school or possibly or excuse me at the high school possibly the middle school as well and what I have for you the rest and you feel free to go ahead and pause the video but um, additional excerpts from the book and they're really all over the place we're only looking at the beginning of the book when we highlight Michael Faraday we're looking at these variety of aspects of nature science that are available in the book and a lot of these aspects creativity tentativeness subjectivity are are really difficult to find in many of the books that are out there uh, that is not to say that you know science is not tentative or, or it doesn't happen very often or that uh, it's not subjective or creative it's just that that isn't something that authors oftentimes focus upon um, until perhaps recently okay well I think this is our last one socially culturally embedded that being where science influences society and society influences science and I think this is a great example right here if you take a moment to read it and theory versus law this is an example of something in, in this book at least in this excerpt that I wouldn't emphasize because it's not real strong however we've got Faraday's law of induction perhaps at a high school level here um, emphasis uh, focusing on but uh, if you chose to um, there would be no corresponding theory at least that I'm not aware of and these are all the scientists that are addressed just in this one book and um, all of them look at or highlight different aspects of the nature of science and um, it isn't made always real explicit by Bodanus so the recognition the same recognition you're asking students to be able to do during their own inquiry um, you're going to need to be able to help students recognize in this reading or highlight in the reading and ask students what aspect is um, 